We'll proceed to uh, recognize our first uh, panel of witnesses. Dennis Quaid is the parent of, a, of newborn twins, Thomas Boone Quaid and Zoe Grace Quaid, who were victims of a heparin overdose due to inadequate safety warnings by the manufacturer. Today, Mr. Quaid will explain the impact that this event had on his family and share his views on the need for patient access to the state court system. Uh, Mr. Quaid, we're delighted to have you with us. You are one of my constituents, and so I especially want to welcome you today. There's a button on the base of the mic. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you for inviting me here today to share my family's story. My wife couldn't be here. She's at home uh, taking care of our twins. But it is our hope that these proceedings may raise public awareness about the issue that is here before us, and that is preemption of suits concerning injuries or death caused by FDA-approved drugs. This is an issue I'm sure most Americans are not aware of, but it is isn't one that could adversely affect all Americans, my family included. I'm sure that uh, many of you know, already know that our newborn twins recently received a fatal, uh, near fatal overdose of blood thinning medication, uh, heparin at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Our 12-day-old infants were mistakenly injected not once but twice over an eight-hour period with a massive overdose of 10,000 units of the anticoagulant drug heparin which is 1,000 times the normal dose of 10 units of HEPLOC that our twins should have received. Both products are manufactured by Baxter Healthcare Corporation. Now, how could this have happened? Well, the answer became very clear to us after talking with the doctors and nurses and doing a little bit of research on our own. The 10 units of HEPLOC and Baxter's 10,000 unit of heparin are deadly similar in their labeling and size. The 10,000 unit label, which I believe you have there, Mr. Chairman, is dark blue, and the 10 unit bottle is light blue. And if the bottles are slightly rotated, which they often are when they're stored, they are virtually indistinguishable. And the similar labeling is what led to the tragic deaths of three infants and severe injuries to three others in Indianapolis the year before. And it was also the major factor in the overdosing of our twins. After the Indianapolis incident, Baxter sent out a warning to hospitals and afterward, seven months later, even changed the label of their heparin to distinguish it from the HEPLOC. But Baxter failed to recall the deadly misleading bottles that were still on the market and stocked in hospitals, including Cedar sinai We consider this to be a dangerous decision by Baxter, made for financial reasons. And our feelings are they recall automobiles, they recall toasters, they even recall dog food. But Baxter failed to recall a medication that, due to its labeling, had already killed three infants and severely injured three others just a year earlier. And then a year after that, the, the Indianapolis incident, the very same incident happened to our 12-day-old infants. Now, although mistakes did occur at Cedars, the overdosing of our twins was a chain of events of human error, and the first link in that chain was Baxter. Baxter's negligence the cause of that was an accident waiting to happen. Now, since this brush with tragedy, my wife and I have found out that such errors are unfortunately all too common. Up to 100,000 patients in the United States alone die in hospitals every year because of medical errors. And we've also learned a lot about the legal system in a very short time, and it was very surprising, I must tell you. Like many Americans, I have uh, always believed that a big problem in this country has been frivolous lawsuits. But now I know that the courts are often the only path that families have that are harmed by drug companies' negligence. And now we face something that could cause grave harm to all Americans. The Supreme Court is about to decide whether the law preempts most lawsuits concerning injuries from drugs and their labeling, simply because the drug was approved by the Federal Food and Drug Administration. Now, in our own case against Baxter, the company is relying on this very same argument before the Supreme Court, that when the FDA allowed Baxter's heparin onto the market, the FDA also immunized Baxter from any liability. So says Baxter, our case may not even be heard before a judge or a jury, no matter how negligent it was in designing its labels or in failing to take the heparin with the old label off the shelves after it knew about the tragedy in Indianapolis. Now, it's hard for me, Mr. Chairman, 
to imagine that this is what Congress intended when it passed the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act in 1938. Did Congress intend to give appointed bureaucrats in the FDA the right to protect a drug company from liability, even when that company cuts corners and jeopardizes public safety? Now, federal ban on lawsuits against drug companies would not just deny victims compensation for the harm that has been done to them. It would also relieve drug companies of their responsibility to make drugs as safe as they can be and moreover, to correct problems after that drug has been on the market. Now let's hope that the Supreme Court will not put barriers in front of patients who are harmed by drug companies. But if the court does decide for the drug companies in favor of them, I respectfully ask this Congress to pass corrective legislation on an emergency basis. I thank you for your time.